What we want to look at in this video is the data type called character. Now, before we can have a good in-depth discussion of the character data type, we really need to understand what ASCII and Unicode are. And there's an important reason for this, because ASCII and Unicode are really what are behind the primitive data type character. What ASCII and Unicode represent are all the symbols that you would see on the keyboard and a few more. There's some non-printing ASCII values or Unicode values, like end of line, but we're going to focus on the printing ones, like capital A through capital Z, lowercase a through lowercase z, the numeric characters like 0 through 9, and symbols like exclamation point, pound, ampersand, open braces, close braces, open parentheses, close parentheses, etc. The character data type stores all of these values individually. And a character is just one of these symbols, one of these characters, one of these glyphs, whatever you want to call them. And so let's talk about ASCII and Unicode and get the underpinnings of character. And then in another video, we'll talk about how the character data type is used. Let's say that I had a girlfriend and I was in love. And I loved my girlfriend so much that I wanted to write a language with her. And we wanted to communicate in this language. And because we were so in love, we were going to call it the language of love. How better to write the language of love than to use X's and O's? So what we did is we sat down together and wrote down the language of love using five slots. You can see here, each one of the five slots is going to have either an O or an X. So A is going to be the pattern five O's, B is going to be the pattern four O's, one X, and C is going to be the pattern three O's, one X, and an O at the end. And so we could do this just using the letters X and O and establish an entire language. And our language of love is only going to have capital letters in it. It's not going to have any lowercase letters in it. Because when you say anything in the language of love, it has to be uppercase, screaming it out loud. And so you can see from this table, we've created a unique pattern for every single letter in the alphabet. And we can do some impressive things with this. Let's say that my girlfriend decided, hey, I want to write a letter in the new language that we created. So what you would do is write out X's and O's using the pattern from the previous table. And from this table, I would divide each one into sections of five and write the corresponding letter along with it. So let's see what letter she decided to write me in the language of love. And she says, no more secrets. And I was able to translate that using the cipher from above. Now that she sent me the message, no more secrets, I agree with her 100% and we decide, hey, we just created our own secret, our own secret language, but we don't want this language to be just between ourselves. We want to share this language with everyone. Well, what are we going to have to do? Well, first, we're going to have to find some other people to share it with, and then we're going to have to teach them how to use X's and O's to write out a letter. And so we share with them the table that we've created. Five O's mean A, four O's and one X mean B, so on and so forth. And now they too can speak to one another in the language of love. And it's important to note that if we're all going to talk in this language of love, that everyone pulls from the same series of X's and O's. Because if I start switching around my X's and O's, the language, the standard is simply not going to work. So now we have created our own language. We can all talk and write to one another in X's and O's, and we have a standard on which to base everything. Unicode and ASCII work in very much the same way, but instead of using X's and O's, it uses ones and zeros. And so hopefully you know that machine code is the basis of all computers, simply ones and zeros. And so what some very clever early computer programmers wrote is a series of seven ones and zeros to correspond with all the symbols necessary to get information across on a computer. So we see the first couple right here. This series means A, this series of seven means B, and this series of binary digits means C. And so just like with the language of love, the language of ASCII, or American Standard Code for Information Interchange, 
created values associated with all capital A through capital Z. You might find it onerous to say, I have seven digits here, and I have to remember that this pattern here is an A. So what they did is converted this from base 2, ones and zeros, to base 10. A in base 10, or in ASCII, is 65. And you can see they use 65, 66, 67, up one each time. And you might be saying, well, why in the world did they start at 65? And like I said, these people were actually ingenious because look what happens when I remove the first two binary digits from the base two value of A. It might not be impressive in binary, but it is certainly impressive in base 10. You get the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so I can look at any of these and say, oh, if I convert these series of ones and zeros into base 10, I can see that the first value in the English alphabet is A, or the eighth value is H, or the 22nd value is V. ASCII doesn't just have capital letters, it also has lowercase letters. So we see it starts at 97 and goes to 122. There is a base 2 equivalent, which you can see here, just like with capital A, let's watch what happens when we remove the first two binary digits. You convert it into base 10 and you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, knowing that that's corresponding with the letter in the alphabet. So the 16th letter in the alphabet is P, or the 23rd letter in the alphabet is W. So we have capital letters, lowercase letters, and now we're going to be looking at numbers. They started with 48 and they went to 57. And watch what happens, and you may be able to predict this, when I remove not the first two, but the first three binary digits in ASCII. So when I convert using just the last four digits, I get 0 through 9, which corresponds perfectly with the symbol 0 through 9. There are also several other symbols that needed to be incorporated that are standardized across computerdom. Some of these characters are the exclamation point, quotes, pound symbol, the colon, the semicolon, the greater than, the less than, the question mark, the open brace, the closed brace, so on and so forth. And all of those, too, have values in ASCII. Now, there's no clever trick with these as there is with capital letters or lowercase letters or numbers, but there really doesn't have to be. And if I want to do what I just did with the language of love and send a message to you using ones and zeros, I could do exactly that. I could get the correct pattern of ones and zeros that everyone has agreed upon and send you a message. And this message happens to be the exact same message that my girlfriend sent me earlier. No more secrets. But as I said earlier, Keeping seven ones and zeros in mind is actually kind of hard to do. So if we convert them into base 10, it would look something like this, and we would get the same result. No more secrets. The two people, or the group of people that created ASCII, didn't want to keep it to themselves. So they wanted to spread it throughout all of computerdom. And so what they had to do is find some other people and talk to them about, hey, we have this ingenious system here. And then, once they spread the system, everyone could talk to everyone as long as they kept the same pattern going. So every computer understands that a 1, 5 zeros, and a 1 at the end means A. Or a 1, 4 zeros, a 1, and another 0 means B. As long as we're on the same page, an A is going to be an A across the world, or a C is going to be a C across the world, and it all relates to 1s and zeros on a computer. The character data type in Java is based off of ASCII and something called Unicode. But ASCII had its limits. It could only store 128 characters, and it was seven binary digits. A byte contains eight bits. ASCII moved from, instead of seven binary digits, to eight binary digits, or it's called extended ASCII, which doubled its capacity of characters from 128 to 256. That worked for a very long time, but eventually other countries and other languages wanted to incorporate their alphabet or their symbols into a standardized code. 
ASCII became outmoded and people moved to what is called Unicode. And Unicode stores all sorts of symbols. Here we see the beginning of the Greek alphabet, Thai characters, Russian characters or the Cyrillic alphabet, currency characters from around the world, and there's even a section for arrows inside of Unicode. And one that I like to add on is characters like the male or female symbol, the Cairo, the telephone, a weather alert saying snow, the nuclear symbol, biohazard, king and queen chess pieces, and club and spade card symbols. So you can see as the world became more and more connected through computers, there really needed to be a standard by which everyone said, this character will be this series of ones and zeros. And 256 became far too small. So what they did is they increased it to two bytes of information rather than one byte of information, which will now allow for around 65,500 characters. And that is what a character is based off today, Unicode values. And you can see on the right here that I've shown the range in base 10, but you can also see the range in base 16. Base 16 is used as you go higher into bases, you don't have to use as many digits to express the same number. Base 2 takes a ton of ones and zeros to express something. Whereas base 10 goes up to five digits, 65,535, whereas base 16 only uses up to four digits from four zeros to four Fs. And this backslash U is simply indicating that you're looking for a Unicode value in front of it. So Unicode is the standard by which all computers speak to one another today and you may be asking yourself what happened to ASCII? Well ASCII got incorporated into Unicode as a small subset of Unicode. If you type in 65 in Unicode it still means A or if you use the hexadecimal equivalent of 65 it still means A. And then finally, there's extended Unicode, which is mostly used for Chinese characters, as there are thousands and thousands of them. So if you had a very, very specialized program in which it had to use special Chinese characters, you would have to use extended Unicode, which uses 32 binary digits as opposed to 16 binary digits that Unicode uses. And that would have somewhere around 4 billion possibilities. So to wrap up our talk on Unicode and ASCII, we understand that character is a single symbol. And these symbols are agreed upon using some kind of standard. And these standards are called Unicode and ASCII. They're all based on a series of ones and zeros. No one likes using ones and zeros to interpret what a number is going to be. So we convert the numbers into higher bases like base 10 or base 16. ASCII was the standard for a long time, but once globalization started to happen, Unicode became the standard because it can hold far more symbols than what ASCII can. If you're going to understand the character data type, you really have to understand its underpinnings, which are Unicode and ASCII.